Hey guys, Goose here and welcome to The Guitar Show. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at the history of Stevie Ray Vaughan's pickups. And that's something that's very personal to me because I'm building this replica, I kind of, I've more or less finished it now. You know, I'm, you know when they had in 2004, John Cruz made, I think a hundred um, Stevie Ray Vaughan replica guitars and I, I, I was drooling and, and I kind of lost out on the chance to buy one of those amazing guitars. Um, but um, in this video, we're going to find out a very interesting thing about the pickups on that guitar. Um, but also, uh, I want, um, through my quest to find the best pickups possible to get that Steve Ray Vaughan tone. Um, but come on, let's face it, it, you know, your fingertips have a, and your brain has a lot to do with this and your, your soul. But as, apart from that, I was looking for the best pickups. And my friend Paul, who's kind of my, my, he's like behind the scenes. He's, he's you're not going to, you're never going to see him in, in a video, but people who know, know Paul in England. And um, Paul kind of put me in touch with Alan Dingwell, who makes these amazing pickups. And for viewers in America, you may not have heard of Alan Dingwell, but you will soon. And um, basically, Alan Dingwell, uh, you know, I heard through the grapevine, he was getting real close to, you know, the whole spirit of the Steve Ray Vaughan pickup sound. And, and, and as such, he's, his pickups are called um spirit srv pickups so we're gonna we're gonna check these out a bit later and delve more into these but first let's just catch up on some history of steve ray vaughan's pickups okay guys so stevie originally acquired his number one in 1974 at ray hennig's heart of texas music in austin and the guitar was originally owned by christopher cross now Steve Ray Vaughan thought the guitar was from 1959 because when he opened it up and looked at the pickups, they had 59 written on them. However, to quote his longtime guitar tech, Rene Martinez, he says, that's right, the reason why he called it a 59 was because of some wiring in it. The back of the pickup said 1959, so the pickups were a 59, but the body of the guitar was 1962. My attitude was, hey, it's your guitar, you can call it whatever you want. Fender didn't make a habit of writing the date that the pickups were made on the black bobbins. So it's much more likely that the pickups were made around 1963, which was when the guitar was made. And maybe there was some writing on the pickup, but that wouldn't have been from Fender. Maybe somebody measured the pickup and maybe it read 5.9 on a multimeter. From 1950 until 1964, Fender pickups were made in what is known as a black bottom design, being black on the bottom side. They had Alnico magnets with rounded edges. The wire was copper in colour and the entire pickup was dipped in hot wax to eliminate unwanted microphonics. Surgical rubber tubing was used as springs to adjust the height of the pickups. In old pickups, this rubber hardens over time and no longer springs, so it's often necessary to replace it. Another one of CV's texts, the late great Cesar Diaz, says, quote, It was a 62 neck with a question mark body. I never saw the date on it. One time a pickup blew up and we changed it for another black bottom. Black bottoms were used up until 1964 when they started appearing with a yellow date on them. The magnetic field changed in 1958 and 59. And if you took a later pickup, and change the polarity, they'll sound like the earlier pickups. The polarity changed from the broadcasters to the telecasters too. So the Steve Ray Vaughan's Tribute Stratocaster, which was unveiled in 1992, which featured the gold hardware and the left-handed style uh, tremolo, came with three Custom Shop Texas Special single coil pickups with cloth wire. The Texas Special pickups first appeared in the Steve Ray Vaughan Signature Strat around the early 90s. These pickups became so popular that Fender had to just offer the pickups alone. The Texas Specials features our Nico 5 pole pieces, and these are wound quite hot. They have a 3.2 Henry's bridge, 2.8 Henry's middle, and a 2.5 Henry's in the neck. The DC resistance is 6.8K in the bridge, 6.3 in the middle, and 6.1 in the neck. It's unlikely that Fender actually had C. Ray Vaughan's guitar in their hands to produce these pickups. And it's in my view that these pickups were made extra hot as a kind of marketing ploy, more than actually replicating Steve Ray Vaughan's pickups in his number one. In November 2003, Fender announced that 100 C. Ray Vaughan replica number ones would be made in the custom shop by John Cruz, and they would be priced at $10,000 each. 
In fact, a few months before Fender, with Stevie's brother Jimmy overseeing the proceedings, were able to get their hands on the actual instrument. But if one actually analyses the video of Number One carried out by Richard McDonald, George Blander and Mike Eldred in 2003 for the purpose of making the 2004 replica, Mike Eldred himself said the neck is dated December 62 and the body is 63 and nothing's been changed. We believe the guitar came from the factory like that. Mike Eldred added, the guitar had been refretted with bigger frets, probably three or four times. The tuning keys had also been changed. The pickups looked like they were stock, but they had been shielded. Eldred comments on the actual 2004 replica. Basically every part for this guitar was reproduced from scratch. The pickups seemed to be stock 63s, but they put some shielding tape around them, which lowers the induction of the pickup. Control pots were standard for the era. The original three-way switch was replaced with a five-way. Yeah, adds Cruz, one of the most challenging things about the guitar was those pickups. Basically, they were stock, but really weak, and we noticed that the neck pickup had a bit more resistance than the others. It wasn't until the covers came off that the guys spotted that shielding around the pickups. So we went to the degree of doing that for the tribute. Most people will never see this stuff, but it's something extra the kind of thing you'll be paying for. So guys, one question I've always had is what actually were the readings of the pickups in Steve Ray Vaughan's number one? We don't actually know the details because although Fender examined the Steve Ray Vaughan guitar, they didn't actually divulge any of the information specifically about the pickups. But there may be one clue. Before the 100 replicas were released in 2004, John Cruz spent weeks getting the first prototype correct. Apparently, Fender digitally recorded every single minute aspect inside and out, going as far as recording the exact output of each pickup. Now, the spec sheet for this guitar states that the pickups are custom shop hand-wound 60s single coil strap pickups, and these are Abbey hand-wound pickups. Fender made a lot of these sets. The readings for these pickups are 6K in the neck, 5.9 in the middle, and 6K in the bridge. So guys, make of that of what you will. Now, without actually examining the guitar, we don't know if these pickups were, you know, wound to the exact measurements of Stevie's pickups. Or on the other hand, Abby just wounded her normal hand-wound 60s single coil strap pickups. So in my opinion, I think that Stevie's pickups were an average set of 1962 to 1963 pickups. One thing to bear in mind, guys, it's also likely that Steve Ray Vaughan's pickups were rewound and could have even been replaced. And all of this information is probably lost in the mist of time. So we can only go on what Fender has told us as a result of the uh, examination in 2003. Okay guys, welcome back. And uh, as promised, we're gonna hear a little bit more about these pickups that um, Alan Dimwell made. And you know, like I said, I was building this guitar and I was trying to get close to, um, you know, just listening to Texas Flood, which is my favorite album. And I was listening to, you know, some of the latest stuff, you know, and uh, I mean, you might not know this, but my favorite tone ever of Steve Ray Vaughan's was actually when he was playing through his Overdrive Special Amp before he had the Steel String Singers. So he probably had a Vibroverb with the 115 inch speaker. And he had as well for a very short time, an o Overdrive Special, which was um, loaned to him by Jackson Brown. And that really was my favorite sound he ever had, um, you know, hands down. Um, you know, I love Elmer Combo as well. And, and, and obviously Texas Flood, he's using a Dumble and, and a Vibroverb. So, you know, there's so many tones of his, but I tend to prefer his, his, his one with the Overdrive Special. So for these clips I've done today, we're actually using um, an Overdrive Special clone here made by Mystic Blues. My shout out to Tommy Cougar who made this amazing amp here. This is the one here, it's 100 watt. And that's going through 15 inch cabinet, Lazy J cabinets, um, which I've got three of now, which I'm, Shout out to Jesse from Lazy J because he's amazing at what he does, builds beautiful amps. Um, and also we, we've got a kind of another Fender style amp um, driving um, another 12 inch speaker. So, you know, I've got two amps here running at the same time to get a kind of a dual amp Stevie Ray Vaughan sort of sound. Um, and basically, 
you know, with the pickups, you know, I, I tried I, 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 some same old Duncan Antiquities in this guitar, and I don't want to say, you know, there's no such thing as the best pickups. It's just the, the pickups that work for you or the, work for the guitar, rather, you know. And the same old Duncans in this guitar didn't sound good. They just didn't gel, you know. They're not bad pickups. They just didn't work in this. And I put the Alan Dingwalls in this guitar, and, and, and it just came together. The guitar just came together, and it started singing. And I was, you know, channeling. I, I was able to channel that Stevie sound as, as best I could. So, um, because, you know, when you're getting into style, whether it's Hendrix or Stevie or whatever, you've got to kind of channel that play. You've got to, you know, get into it to, to the psyche of, of that tone, you know, you, so your fingers connect and the sound's there and everything's right, you know, the touch sensitivity, and it's all working for you. And that's when you can really channel that style of playing. And so with, with, with Alan's pickups, I think, you know, he's gone, he's kind of gone all the way. And like I, we, we've just you know, we've you've just learned about in the history video part of this video, you know, Alan's done that. He's, he's really gone down and, you know, um, you know, they're shielded as, as, as Stevie's was. And these are the values are around the 62, 63 pickups, you know, so it's, it's, it's pretty much, you know, you, you can, you can put these in and you can forget and just play, you know, you know, you're, you're in the ballpark. Um, I think some of uh, Fender's pickups like the Texas specials, you know, whilst some people may love them, I, th I don't think they were really close to what um, Steve Ray Vaughan was actually using. Because Steve Ray Vaughan, let's face it, he was just using 62 pickups, you know, which had shielding, you know, for most of his career. Um, and the Texas specials, whatever they were, I'm not, I'm not really that much up on what they were, but for me, they didn't, they've never sounded great for that style. And I think, um, I think Fender just made pickups for Stevie what... Fender thought he might like rather than actually being accurate and they, they didn't get his number one guitar and measure, start measuring the pickups and measuring how many Henrys they were putting out, you know, so, um, and ohms, whatever. So, you know, that's really where it comes down to somebody who's, who's going to go all the way and do all the research, you know, really, really go down the rabbit hole <clears throat> like we do in these videos and then put a pickup together. And, and that's what Alan Dingwall's done with these ones. And that's why I want to give a big shout out to Alan and say, uh, thank you for, for getting this, this beautiful set made and uh, forgetting the tone because like literally this guitar didn't sound good, you know, and I put these pickups in now it does. So, you know, <laughs>